Hey everyone, I hope you are enjoying the summer so far. Today we're going to be covering a topic that is widely requested, and I know some of you may already know the answer, but we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at how firecrackers compare to dynamite, or TNT. I did a video just like this one some time back, but I feel it's as good as a time as any to recap on what the urgent difference is between firecrackers and dynamite. Most of you are already aware that firecrackers, at least the legal ones labeled as 1.0, 4G are consumer fireworks and can legally be sold anytime during the 4th of July. When I myself was little, I always thought that firecrackers and even the report made by some smaller bottle rockets were in fact the loudest things to exist and I loved these fireworks ever since. Obviously firecrackers do explode, combust, or react due to the chemical compound within them, known as flash powder, but even outside of the consumer market for firecrackers, Flash powder is responsible for one of the best deflagrant based explosions, which means the pressure wave emitted will traject at the speed of sound and not beyond it. There are rare cases where flash powder can detonate, but we will take a look more in detail shortly, as we are primarily focusing on how firecrackers work before comparing them to higher explosives. As already stated, most flash powders are deflagrants, and a deflagrant does not detonate with a fuse which is made to burn slowly. Any larger firecrackers referred to as quarter sticks, M80s, full sticks, and salutes will not detonate simply because their chemical formula is not designed to. And this is the first primary area of confusion by many when looking at these devices, and just because it may have the word quarter stick, dynamite, or full stick, it simply does not mean it is based on a higher explosive like TNT. For instance, a flash powder salute may contain a 7-3 ratio of a aluminum powder and potassium perchlorate, and if the firecracker is desired to be loud or more powerful, then it is imperative to have the oxidizer and fuel become more and more fine. The burn time is a lot quicker and is not slowed down by any larger particles. At this point, we can generalize that the reactant within the firecracker is a powerful flash. Now, there are special instances where firecrackers can detonate, but it requires that either the confinement be hard and not soft, or that the formula is rather unique, as few flash compositions are in fact capable of detonation. Using a detonator or any initiator for a firecracker will at best perform speeds of up to 1800 to 2200 meters per second, which is detonation, but far less than dynamite, as dynamite can reach speeds of up to 7700 meters per second at the CJ plane. Of course, this also goes for for using a plain firework fuse to reach the firecracker, as lo and behold, the material will not burn faster than the speed of sound, regardless of how many rants or reports like to say it will detonate, which is out of context and demonstrably mischaracterized for plain old fireworks. The sound heard is due to near instantaneous rise in temperature and pressure, and at peak, flash can exceed 400 times atmospheric pressure in terms of density. Now that we have what a firecracker is, let's move on to dynamite. On the other hand, dynamite is a high explosive so powerful that it requires in the millions of frames per second to observe its reaction. This is due to the influx of gases almost instantly ramming into the explosive upon proper detonation. While flash powder is impressive, it is nothing like a high explosive like dynamite, which is capable of reaction speeds of up to four times greater even with using a detonator on a firecracker. Even the original inventor of dynamite, Escan Daniel Sobrero himself was horrified by the effects of it. At one point, Sobrero had been badly injured by it and even made a point of how frightening it was to know nitroglycerin was in commercial works. He even said that due to how many accidents have occurred in the industry, he was ashamed to admit being its discoverer. After all, these reports were emerging from havoc given that dynamite was not a toy to play with. Nitroglycerin has its own reaction that happens because of the carbon hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen in the formula. Ideally, one more hydrogen, and it will be perfectly balanced, but because of the missing hydrogen atom, the whole molecule is unstable, reaching a state of stability when all of the carbon and hydrogen have been nitrated, providing the oxygen. Nitroglycerin is so powerful because the oxidizer and fuel are so close together, and when it is initiated, it is something in small volume increasing to a ridiculously large volume 
volume, many fold because of the gases present. Speaking of gases, firecrackers do not emit gases when reacting, and this is another key difference which makes them far from the chemistry a high explosive has. When firecrackers go off, they do not normally produce gases, but only metallic byproducts or solid byproducts. However, dynamite and any other high explosive is guaranteed to produce gases as the hydrogen and oxygen within the equation is water-based. Still not convinced that firecrackers are different than dynamite? Well, strap yourself down and let's look at the chemistry more in detail. Have you ever wondered what the bright flash is from a firecracker? The flash or bang from a firecracker is actually based on the rapid changing of oxidation states. As you may already know, 7-3 flash powder is a ratio between potassium perchlorate, or KClO4 for terms of chemistry, and aluminum powder, which we'll call AL for short. When a sufficient amount of energy from a fuse triggers the reaction, it causes a flash, and the piece of chemistry left behind which previously oxidized the aluminum is known as potassium chloride. As you already are aware, when you put a flame on flash powder, it undergoes a reaction that is very energetic in nature, but the chemistry is rather sophisticated and not fully that of truly explosives by definition. Well, why do we say this? To answer this question, let's briefly analyze the mechanisms of its reaction. When flash powder is initiated and reacts, it produces aluminum oxide and potassium chloride. The composition burns very fast as soon as the reaction is complete. All that is left is the solid byproduct of aluminum oxide and potassium chloride. Of course, remember the KClO4 is simply there to oxidize the aluminum and therefore, chemically, for every two atoms of aluminum, there are three oxygen atoms that will be needed from the KClO4 to supply for the aluminum's reduction reaction, which yields the engenderment of often simply referred to as aluminum oxide or aluma for short. After all, potassium perchlorate will provide its oxygen atoms to the aluminum and therefore oxidize it. After the reaction, there are simply just the free potassium cations with the positive charge and negative chlorine anion, or more correctly chloride. This then forms potassium chloride, KCl, which can be simply left alone because like aluminum oxide, KCl will not typically react with anything further in normal post-flash composition combustion contexts. Therefore, what remains behind after the reaction of conventional flash powder is potassium chloride, which was within the KClO4, meaning it had all the oxygen stripped off of it. You may have also wondered in the past why thermite burns slower than flash powder, and it is simply due to the slower rate of exchange in oxygen atoms. Anyway, what you will notice and should take note of about this reaction is that there are, in fact, no true gases present in the reaction, and this is an extremely important distinction when looking at the differentiations between low explosive firecrackers and high explosive dynamite. Flash powder is not a true explosive by definition, but it is classified widely in different agencies. If the ATF from an academic standpoint classified flash powder, they would not see it as an explosive because flash powder is simply not an acid. Flash does not produce gaseous products, and therefore it is not an explosive under academic classification. Chemically, flash powder is very unstable, heat, static, and friction sensitive, and that is why it is dangerous, let alone not considered a true explosive. While it is considered volatile, it is unique due to not producing any gases when discharged, and it is simply to be left at that. The CJ plane, otherwise known as the abbreviation for the chapman juge condition, is a zone present in most energetic materials per se, but specifically for items that truly undergo an experienced detonation. The CJ plane is the localized region where violent intermolecular activities occur in a high explosive. It is essentially where the chemical reaction of the explosive's materials fuel and oxidizer occurs and propagates through the material faster than the speed of sound. It is in which what holds the idea that detonation waves travel through high explosives at a certain speed. The very energetically reacting decomposition produces gases which reach specific sonic velocity in frame of the leading shockwave through the energetic material. In front of this plane, there is unoxidized or unreacted explosives that is yet to release its chemical energy, and as the CJ plane continues to move through the explosive tree,
charge, the reaction happens, and the carbon is reacted to form carbon dioxide, nitrogen forms from the nitrates diatomic stable nitrogen, and any hydrogen from the molecule forms with oxygen to form water vapor. When these near instantaneous stabilities occur, it causes insane levels of pressure, which have nothing to do with fireworks at all. Firecrackers and dynamite are two completely different entities on their own, and it is impossible to state that a firecracker is a high explosive simply due to it not being an acid, capable of detonation, and producing no gases upon reacting. And just remember, if you ever see or hear some folks talking about M80s and quarter sticks, it probably means they are just referring to fireworks. With that being said, I hope this video was helpful in putting any confusion between firecrackers and dynamite to rest. I would like to hear what some of your thoughts are in the description, and I will see you all next time.